Welcome to Human Factors Cast, your weekly podcast for all things human factors, psychology, and design. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Human Factors Cast. I'm your host, Nick Rome, joined today by Billy Hall. Hey, guys. How's it going? He's back. Yeah. And Mr. Blake Arnsdorf. What's up, everybody? All right. Well, I'm glad to have you back, Billy. I'm glad to be back. I mean, we, I really feel like I am the strawberry in this Neapolitan ice cream we call a show. Yeah, yeah. No, we definitely missed you last week because uh-huh. Blake and I sat here talking and we kind of were acting like know-it-alls and... We had no one just to kind breeze of breeze through the topic. We did. And I, I'm I'm your token bully from the '50s who just has to run out and be like, "Nerd." No, but I really yeah, well, want to understand everything yeah, I, because well, I come from a troubled home. You're less like nerds and more like you guys are witchcraft and uh, wizardry, wizardry, wizardry. <laughs> which I mean, you guys could be evil scientists. I, I'm not opposed to it. It all involves the Illuminati somehow. I yeah, think. well, MS stands for Mad Scientist. There you go. How are you doing, Blake? <laughs> I'm doing just. I forgot <laughs> your name there. <laughs> I you missed you, you know what? You know what Blake? I forgot? You know what I forgot? Is this not this is not the first time that you've been back because we're recording this in advance. <laughs> oh! <laughs> wow. wow. All right. Yeah, we are recording this for the holiday. Yes, yes, because we are not going to be here um, during the holidays. Right, but, right, right. But we're recording this ahead of time just so you guys have the content. This is like our there. Christmas special. Uh, uh, kind of. Yeah. Holiday special. Let's yeah, be, yeah. Holiday let's be special. Here. Uh, but what are we talking about for our holiday special? We're going to be talking about organizational structure. Yay! Woo! Happy holidays, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Happy organizational <laughs> we're just, while structure. You, while we're you're gonna... popping out your iPads and your cool dude tech gadgets, we're going to be talking about how you can keep organized. You know what? And and this is actually a really depressing topic around the holiday. We're talking about firing people, laying people off. Like We talk about woo! the good stuff, too. Oh, no, yeah, that's like, true. That's true. Like quantifying how a person's workload really is good or bad, you know? That sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah I mean, I guess. So... Yeah, and we're talking about a lot of this organization downsizing, but what is the organizational structure and what does it have to do with psychology, really? Okay, so organizational structure is basically how something is organized within uh, an organization, right? So how, what is the structure like? And you know, it defines sort of these activities that have to do with task allocation, uh-huh. coordination, how how supervisors are interacting with their employees, uh, you know, how how is achievement dealt with in these environments, um, and and you know the t- the types of business goals and aims they have. Am I missing anything, Blake? No. So I mean, it's just how people envision the entire structure of the organization right like so what's the environment like what are we moving towards who do i report to how do i know that i'm doing good those kinds of things are you guys telling me that this is basically the psychology of how i can be a james bond villain um i yeah well we can use that as an example sure oh, I mean, i'm getting excited now I mean, so so you asked how it pertains to psychology right right right, right and right. so this is this is IO psychology or industrial and organizational psychology. Sounds so metal. It well, yeah, industrial I guess. Industrial psychology. <laughs> Indu- <laughs> right? We need oh, some yeah. like <laughs> heavy metal. guitar riffs. We believe in the id and the ego. Right. Um so yeah, no, it's it's basically how it's the study of how humans and and their behavior specifically uh-huh. in the workplace applies to you know, the, the psychological theories that we talk about on the show or just out there in general, like cognitive science, general cognitive science, and basically how can you utilize those in an organizational structure? Okay, so these people are kind of like, there are people out there who are kind of like organizational psychologists, right? Yes. What do they do for the company then? Do they just come in and be like, that guy, that guy, that guy, they're awesome, the rest of them, GTFO? Yeah. The, Get the freak out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Saved <laughs> it. <laughs> Family, Family show. show. Family show. <laughs> yeah. So uh, like any good scientist, right, they're going to try and measure performance of the people that are in the company. Mm-hmm. So look at how, how they're doing. Are they meeting their quotas they're supposed to? I mean, it's, of course, it's going to depend on how your company is structured. It depends. <laughs> but a big part, too, is are they are they motivated? So y- you'll see like. The are psychologist people... or the people that are there uh, op, uh, um, um, observing? What are, what are you trying to say? Observing. 
Where, is Timmy in the well, Lassie? <laughs> Where's Timmy, Lassie? <laughs> uh, is, are you talking about the psychologist, how they're motivated, or are you talking about the uh, different types of... Uh, the psychologists themselves. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, because they want to know just at a, at a high level if they're coming in or if it's somebody that already exists in the organization. Like, how are people motivated that work there? Are they satisfied with their jobs? Um, th- or other diff- looking at different attitudes they right, might so, have. Well, and we have like ergonomists come in and say, "Whoa, you know, whoa, are, whoa, whoa, try whoa, that again." Whoa, 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 ergonomists. 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 Are those the people that. who make the little cranes and you know the little frogs out of paper? I don't know if we had. Hang on. When does this show drop? The 26th? 26th. Yeah, so we had Woodrow on <laughs> last week. And, uh, <laughs> he talked a lot. Of professional. He ergonomist. talked a lot about uh, ergonomics and how that kind of plays in. No, but you have people like him who come in and say, you know, adjust your uh, desk to be a certain way. He, he explained it last week, guys. Come on. You know this. Oh, right, 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 <laughs> right, right. right. Yeah, it. totally got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, so, so they, they'll come in and make sure that everyone's healthy and safe while working on the job. It's, it's a lot of everything, right? Okay, okay. So they're kind of like the feng shui of the office world. Right, yeah. And they need, they need a ton of information to kind of do their job. Okay, but why, how they collect this information, you know, employee uh, behaviors and attitudes. Because I tell you right now, every time my boss comes through, this is the best job I have ever had. Because you don't want to lose it. Right, exactly. 100%. Oh, look at me <laughs> typing away, doing everything I do. Oh, did I just see a person walk in there that wasn't supposed to? I am on it. Oh, man. <laughs> doing my job. No, that's that's good. Um, the, so let's talk about analyzing jobs or, or sort of... Um, Job analysis, Ooh. if job you will, analysis. analyzing the job. Uh, yeah. So this is so they they took a, they take a look at um you know kind of what tasks their employees are doing. Mm-hmm. They take a look at um sort of what uh, what KSAs knowledge skills abilities. Yeah. Uh, knowledge skills and abilities. Yeah. That's KSA. Okay. We so their KSA score. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of, yeah, it, and basically it's all related to how, how successfully are they doing the job and to what efficiency are they doing the job, all this kind of thing, right? Am I missing any points there? No, I don't think so. I mean, you're just looking to define what tasks you have in your organization that need to be completed to be successful and then what types of people you need to fill those jobs. Like, do you need a bunch of engineers? Do you need software developers? So, like, say, for example, once again, going back to that, I, I am a James Bond villain and I want elite ninjas to be part of my group. I'm going to look at their job this these ksa's job skills and abilities right so uh so, so you would yeah you would look at the knowledge of the ninjas do they know the uh the art of shinobi right 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 how uh, well do they know their art of shinobi? that's the skills right right and uh, I, well or abilities i guess like what is their skill set how many how many skills within how shinobi? many weapons do they know in their skill set yes yes and then they're and they're and then they're um uh what's the next one abilities Can, abilities how how good are they at their ability of sneaking around and stealthily assassinating people and then what's the last one uh let's see knowledge how knowledgeable knowledge. they are how yeah. knowledgeable they are on the art of killing assassins what degree of belt do they have that kind of right stuff. okay yeah. yeah i see how this works we don't hire anyone that is <laughs> less than a black belt so what what's higher than a black belt is it double black Floral is belt. It, what is it? Floral, Floral belt? Tie-dye? Depends, tie depends on what kind of like martial arts. tie-dye belt. It's just Rainbow. a buckle with a hypnotoad on the front of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, how do they... That's the thing, but how do they collect information about employees' behaviors and attitudes, though? Survey method. So, so okay. How many times have you been sitting at your desk uh-huh. and you get an email from your boss that right. says, hey, we're sending out this employee-wide survey. Uh, it's completely anonymous and... Uh, you know, we'll we'll break it down by department so we kind of know what the departments feel like, but we won't know your individual answers. How many have you gotten any of those emails? Before? I have gotten a couple of them on my jobs. Yeah, yeah. So they'll send out these surveys, uh, and this is this is a way for them. And we talked about surveys a couple of weeks ago with um, usability testing methodology. I think it had to be. You had to. Hit yeah, 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 yeah. We yeah, hit yeah. on. We it talked somewhere. about survey methods. Yeah. So so they'll send these things out and say, you know, basically how how do you feel about your job and. The fact that it's anonymous and they kind of break it down by um, department or or role. Sometimes they'll say like, "Are you are you a UX person or are you you know?" And that gets dangerous, especially when there's only like one or two in the company, and yeah. you can you can narrow them down. <laughs> Bring but, it back. But they will do it by um, 
department too. So like the software department, how do they feel about it? And that way it gives them that resolution without sacrificing their privacy. I get it. I mean, I get it. But how do you how do you not like I remember sometimes with teachers that I just thought were cool people. I wouldn't look at them objectively. I would just put fives every time I would have to rate like a professor or something in those. Tests. Why would you do that? That gives us false hope. That's awful, Billy. No, I mean, that happens when you do surveys. <laughs> but right? people do it. it. Like yeah, a lot no, of people either do it. Yeah. They either put that or they put the mid. Like I've never understood what neutral feelings actually indicate in that sort of survey method. Well, it stops you from having to make a decision, right? Because if you just really don't know how to answer that's the what question, I'm saying. How like, do you oh, middle. see? That's the one thing. How do you quantify something like this? So, I mean, I guess. So I've got something I can bring in that I go. didn't include go. here. Yes, uh, go. This, and, bring it in. Okay. So, in this has been interesting for me from like starting a new job, and they're really heavy on metrics per person. So they want to know exactly what you're doing. Metrics per person. Oh, man, Metric. that's scary. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, the, like how much time how are you spending on Facebook? How productive? How no, no. no how like, many there's hours no Facebook. Facebook. There's no phones in the room. There's none of that kind of stuff. Wow. Uh, but yeah, so they have. I have key metrics that I have to meet almost every day. So I have to, like, I'm, all, I'm helping onboard clients, right? So I have to, per client, which I have 10, I have to like meet a certain percentage of having them through our onboarding process per day. And that's how my like, uh, I don't know, performance and efficiency is being evaluated daily and weekly and by department. So right. it's, it's it's going through this thing called how? key valuation drivers, which is just like a metrics based approach to looking at uh, people's performance in a company. How is this any different than reaching quotas in like sales jobs or no, volume about, of calls in call centers? I was just about to bring up this is common in retail, too, where. Yeah. You get, um, you know, at the when you ring somebody up and they have a survey at the very bottom of the receipt, receipt. Yeah, you know, if they don't get people to fill out that survey and rate the salesperson or the cashier's performance, yeah, they get dinged. They get written up. Well, that's pretty hardcore. Well, I mean, it helps these uh, organizations keep track of their employees and how well they're doing. Yeah, but you're Why, on the whim of a person who has an interaction with you for only like 10 minutes in retail, especially, I mean, how can you do that? You know? Right. Well, I mean, coming back to what Blake was saying, you know, the, the ones where they track your efficiency with other people, those ones are a little bit more grounded in, um, like those, those ones to me are a little more objective when it comes to rating the employee. Mm -hmm. When you get into the subjectivity, that's when I think it's unfair. Cause like I've worked retail jobs and that's, it was, that's gotta be really it tough was too. Awful. It was yeah. awful trying to get people to go, yeah, can you just like rate five stars so I keep my job? Like, it sucks. Yeah, seriously, can, it's like it seems really bad. It's almost like negative tipping, almost. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that could okay. be that could be a metric, right? So, Tips. Uh, all right, all right. <laughs> let me tip. let me let me see if I can't get any more clarity to this. Okay, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm a new Bond villain. Okay, and I'm starting what's, this. Hang on, what's your Bond villain name? Oh gosh, I'm going to say it's a Doctor Killjoy. Doctor Killjoy Hall. No, 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 no Hall. No, no, no. no. just okay. Doctor Killjoy. I'm like Prince. Doctor Comstark Killjoy. Ooh, I like are. that. Maybe I'm like, and I want to get my ninja assassins together. Okay, okay. So Doctor Comstark Killjoy wants to uh -huh. get his assassins together. My new organization, you know. Right. Um, and how can I? How can organizational psychology help me to make sure that my ninja assassins are very happy with their positions? Well, okay. So let me ask you this: What uh, are your goals? World domination. World domination. Okay. So what you need to do, mm -hmm. you've defined your goal is world domination. Now, how are you going to go about world domination? Uh, okay. Well, with my ninja assassins, I'm going to kill all the world leaders and replace them with ninja assassins who can impersonate them so that they'll sign all over their nuclear launch codes to me. Have let's, I put too much thought into this? Let's just, be, holidays, clear. Let's just be clear. Yeah, happy holidays. And let's just be clear. <laughs> I'm under security investigation right now. So <laughs> I, this is the first time I'm hearing about this. Uh, <laughs> I have nothing to do with Billy it. Billy Killjoy Hall. <laughs> so, no. So, okay. So world domination, kill all the leaders. That's your that's your goal as, right, right, a, right. as a hypothetical... James Bond this. villain. Yes, yes. Uh, Hypothetical. <laughs> and uh, no okay. one would really be able to stop so, me. So what you've done is you've defined your goals. Right? right. Now, you hire people who are going to help you accomplish those goals. Okay. I need impersonators and I need uh, assassins. Right. And, and, and you hire them based on their skill and how they're going to accomplish your goals. Right. So that, that's one way. 
Uh-huh. Um, you, you're basically doing a task analysis for your organization. We talked about task analysis yes, before. Yes, oh, yes, for yes. sure. Yeah. Okay, so we're making that outline of it. So that's when I bring Actually, in the organizational psychologist. Hold up, really okay. quick. Okay. Really quick. I just want to apologize. A couple weeks ago when we did the usability testing methodology, I had a couple people email me about this. I'm sorry. I know I we were talking about contextual task analysis, and I went with contextual inquiry. I know I made a mistake. You can stop emailing about it now since we addressed it on the show. How do you really? live with yourself? You. I know. Mm. I know. Well, I task know where analysis. my ninjas are going. Hold up. Really quick. Just to go back to that episode, task yeah. analysis is when you put up a bunch of post-it notes on the wall and, and kind of break down how they do a task. All right. So that being <laughs> said, we're talking about your criminal organization trying to take over the world. Right, right, right. Form. Right. So you're doing a task analysis for your organization. Mm-hmm. You want to start out at the high level. Right. Right. And and sort of work down from that and see what needs to get done. And hopefully that'll at least give you a way to figure out like, OK, now I know the high level things that I need to get done to take over the world. What kinds of people do I need? OK. Do I bring in when I get these goals? Is that when I bring in the organizational psychologist or do I have to have that before I bring in the organizational they might, psychologist? They might be able to help you narrow down your goals. I see. Yeah, so... Just start with the populated worlds. Don't worry about the third countries. They'll fall? Yeah, Close they'll fall behind, on their I own. Guess, I, yeah. yeah, they'll, they'll, <laughs> I mean, they'll get, get in line. <laughs> they'll yeah. fall? Yeah. They'll get in line. I, I, yeah, all right. What's okay, next? so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know what I want my criminal... Uh, so we got the idea of what my criminal syndicate organization wants to do. I've okay. defined the people that I need. Yes. How do I make sure I get them when I'm hiring? So, like, you know, how do I get ninja assassins? Do they exist? Well, if we knew for a fact, it wouldn't be very good for ninja assassins. Well, you need to know if the types of people that you need exist. Is there, so, is there someone who is capable of taking out world leaders? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, okay. You know, do is that in somebody's skill set? Well, I, I mean, like, can you type that into LinkedIn? I'm not sure. Of course you can. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's it's kind of getting at the fact that all right, you might have these people that you're wanting but you just bring in just somebody that's almost to that point somebody that's like i don't know a little bit of one step below being able to take out a world leader and you can train them up like he's a black belt but he's not full ninja yet Maybe yeah i bring him on and hone his skills so he can get other people around him to do it as well exactly i get yeah. the whole cobra kai dojo and at the end i get the bad guys from ninja gaiden I couldn't have said it better. There we go. Karate Kid reference. However, if, yes. you're, if you're just looking for like common people that you know exist, you can mm-hmm. use different screening techniques that you might see IO psychologists help you employ. So this can be just like interviews based off of resumes, um, even giving people try it, trial periods of performance, which I've seen a lot of recently. That you, seems pretty brutal. Yeah. You, like, you bring somebody like, in as bro, kind of like a dance contractor. Dance for me. Yeah. Dance for me, monkey. Uh, or you... Just review their resume in general, make decisions in a small team, and bring them on see how they do. So, you know, how good they are with Ninja Stars, how many people they've killed, what's the highest profile. Yeah, you know? again, yeah, there you, you would have hopefully set those, those qualities metrics. you were trying to bring in early when right, you talked right, to right. a psychologist. So, right. yeah. And yeah. that's who the people I bring. Okay, I see where this is going. So, now okay. that I have my henchmen, how okay. do I make sure they're doing their job correctly and they don't fall for some sexy British spy? Ooh, that's you a, can't ever avoid that. Yeah, Billy. you can't. <laughs> you can't. You just can't. <laughs> you have to build that in. Uh-huh. You have to build that in. I guess. So, so okay. So, sorry. Your question was: You have. How your do I make to, sure they do their? They're job, doing their job. Their well, performance correctly. Well, we come back to those metrics that we talked a little bit about earlier, right? We we want to make sure that they are doing their jobs. So, bring me their head. That's that's one way. Uh huh. Right. 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 Um. Now, if they bring you a fake head, you oh well, no. you want a this DNA thing is made out of paper mache, <laughs> right? Well, I, I thought it's okay. what you wanted. Well, what if, what if they brought you somebody who was like a doppelganger, right? That oh, looked I like you want to get a geneticist who can do a DNA test. Whoa, my organization's right? getting so elaborate. Now. It is. See, this is why a lot of criminal masterminds fail because they can't. It's just too much there's, barrier. To there's entry. a lot, right? I get it. And I then get it. you have to deal with you know the moral component of the workers' uh, sort of moral compass, right? The, are they gonna want to kill these people? Uh, is, is, a deal with yeah. is a yeah. geneticist? Is a geneticist going to, going to want to support uh, this kind of? Um, are, are they gonna want to test whether or not it's a, a leader dead? Uh, uh, I see. So, I see. So, I mean, are they going to have time and effort? And but I mean, in tech fields, like going out, real talk for a minute here. Right. Okay, but in okay. tech fields, 
like oh, you, you guys, mean, you mean like, criminal organization <laughs> wasn't real talk? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> No, but I mean, like in tech fields, you, a lot of times you guys are developing things and products that haven't existed yet or don't exist yet. Okay, how do you guys fair. find the people or measure how? I think it's kind of like the idea of early typists, right? What was the benchmark of how much, how many words per minute should a typist be able to do? Does that make sense? I don't really know how to word. This so it's like, often. how do you how do you hire? someone who can kind of think outside the box and push the boundaries is that what you're asking well what how do you set a minimum if there is no min how do you set the average if there's no average being been set yet that's, that's a really interesting thing to tackle question. right question you can all like you know the way i would i would phrase it because i think i've had a little bit of experience with this recently uh, mm -hmm. for the company i work for now like it's a technology that doesn't exist mm -hmm. and i was wondering like where our developers came from like how how did we pick how did the, you get there how do we hand pick these guys right well one dude just used to work uh like in a in boeing's r d department wow so in like places that are doing just research and development projects that's somewhere to go pick out of the pool people that have a little bit of maybe a creative backbone to the technology they built before maybe put some thought into what you're currently doing before they actually were doing when they were doing something else perhaps or at least you know they've got that creative thought process that they can bring into their engineering if that makes any sense yeah but how do you right. know they're not just doing the bare minimum at bare minimum and but or pushing the boundaries like you said so so one way to do do this is to kind of um th so think about like a like an interview type of situation and not just like the typical interview, but but think about like a day long interview where they interrogate you, so to speak, and really get a sense of your skill set. Mm -hmm. So you bring to them a portfolio piece of all your past work. You uh, and, and and this is really interesting, and and I've actually seen a lot of more companies starting to do this, where they will actually uh, challenge you live in an interview where you have zero preparation to kind of uh, investigate how well you are um, adapting to a situation. So, for example, uh, like in our field, I've done design challenges during interviews where they've, mm -hmm. they've presented me with uh, a unique situation and I'm, I'm asked to solve it on the spot. I see. Like my job, we actually do, when we hire coders and things like that, we do like little coding challenges. We yeah. get people together and we pass out little coding challenges and they take interest. Or when you come in for an interview and you're a designer, they show you how you, you show them your idea of an outline of a design. Right or wrong, it's the idea of how well you can manage the work. So you set benchmarks, really. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and that, that, that interview, that, the, uh, sorry, that testing aspect, that, that challenge aspect is, is sort of an indication of, okay, they just got thrown a curveball, right? They were not expecting this in the interview. So how, how do they handle it, right? How are they able to adapt to this? And how do they think outside the box? How, it gives you insights into their thought process, which is really valuable and something that you can't see on paper. I see. So it also generates a sense of trust in their performances. But the other side of it, back to my villainous intention, is okay. how do I get them to tr my minions to trust me so uh so we didn't talk about trust and leadership but that also uh would help your people perform right mm -hmm. so there's the oh, yeah okay, go mean, ahead. so the I more mean, they trust you of course hopefully they're going to do better work if they believe kind of in your vision of the company and yeah. all those kinds of things. If, yeah if they Especially believe in, in world case, domination right? my world goal of uniting all <laughs> so yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you can do a lot of different things as a leader, but I think the biggest one, and I certainly have felt this way. I don't know about you guys, but if you notice that the people that are working above you are obviously competent and able to complete the jobs themselves, like they they're clearly able to explain to you what that needs to be done, and are able to even show you to some degree what it, what are like the benchmarks you need to hit. Um, another big one is especially if you're a villain. Yes. Is being passionate about the work that you're doing. Well, I I got the maniacal <laughs> laughter down. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. You know, You've got that under control. Can, can we hear your maniacal laugh? <laughs> Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. Oh, that was pretty good. <laughs> there it is. But Comstock killed Joy. Is, is it Dr. Comstock killed Joy? Dr. Comstock <laughs> killed Joy. I don't even know what it's James Bond I am. <laughs> <laughs> should I, Are you like should Roger I be Daniel Moore? Craig or... I, don't, I think what you're is... more of a Roger Moore, it seems okay. like. All right. Yeah. I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. 
We got right. Pierce Brosnan as Blake, though. Oh, man. <laughs> God. So beautiful. <laughs> All right. So handsome. Okay. Uh, no. Okay. So there's a couple That's other things. Weird. There's a, so there's this article, Psychology Today, uh, kind of breaks down what it takes to be a good leader. Are you interested, uh, I, Doctor Comstar Killjoy? I am very interested on how to be a great leader. Oh man. no. Okay. So so now, Doctor Comstar Killjoy, I want you, you. I know, right? It's such a good <laughs> the name. The doctor is killing me. <laughs> <laughs> doctor Literally. Comstar. It's so great that you guys are sci- you guys are closer to being doctors than I am. <laughs> hey, if you're a villain, I think doctor just comes with the domain. Yes, I don't even think it's you need yours. a PhD. I have for a that. PhD in villainy. <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> cool. So, okay, so psychology today breaks down what it takes to be a good leader. Uh-huh. And, you know, this this is going to be hard for you, Dr. Comstar Killjoy. It's nothing is difficult for me. Uh so so Dr. Comstar Killjoy, let me ask you. Yes. Do you see your employees as expendable? Mm. See, it's gonna be it's gonna be hard for you. <laughs> this is gonna be really hard for you then. So let me break it down. So you, Dr. Uh-huh. Comstar Killjoy, you're competent. Right? right, right, right. So that's one one thing. You wanna be competent, you wanna be able to complete your job. I think mm-hmm. Blake was taking taking, you know, this uh, a little bit earlier. You wanna you wanna make sure that you can complete the job. That way your employees will go, Yeah, he can do it, I can do it too. Oh yeah, um, lead by example. I get it. I get it. Yeah, uh, yeah. We we want to operate with self awareness. We want we want to know what's going on within the organization. Um, you know that whole open door policy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Comstar Killjoy always has an open door policy. My, How does this make you the door. feel? Right? <laughs> There's like Jeez. little inspirational posters all around the office. You I can the, do it. Believe. Like, imagine. Like, hang in there. <laughs> I have a little red button. It just. Opens up a bunch of bunnies. Feel better about yourself while cuddly bunnies. Right. So, so okay. <laughs> let me let me ask you, Doctor Comstar Killjoy. Do you do you um do you want what's best for your employees or what's best for you? Actually, I want what's best for my employees and me. The world needs to bow before me. You're a good leader then. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Too many inspirational posters. Um, <laughs> These Hang can in all there. be inspirational. Oh, yeah, they can. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Maniacal evil villain p- motivational poster. Dr. Comstar Killjoy, Let me. Ap- I'm, I'm an employee mm-hmm. of yours. Mm. I'm going to come up to you and tell you that there's this problem with... Um, one of the things that we're working on. Okay. Do you listen to me? Yes. Are you sure? Because I'm, I'm just a nobody. Well, no. I, if there's a problem, I need to know this if is, there's a problem in my This is getting really scary. He's a good leader. Yeah. This this is, <laughs> he's meeting all this the terrifying. I need to know so I can squash it beneath my boot. There you go. Okay. Well, as long as it's not your employee, you want to listen to your employees. Oh, right? I listen to my employee, but then I quash the problem with my Another, <laughs> another uh, aspect of a good leader uh-huh. is you have to have perspective. You have to understand what it's like from their perspective. They want, they want to climb the ranks and get to your job. They'll never have your job, but that's their goal, and you have to understand that. They do want to be your right-hand man. Well, right? one day when I was in the slums of Ethiopia, I understood what it was to be hungry and starving, and I knew I had to control the world. Interesting. I'm wondering if he's like still talking in character, or if this is really this is who, a real thing. I don't even is... know. <laughs> <laughs> Scary. Yeah, I just took you guys there. <laughs> uh, let's see here. You, you as Doctor Cobstar Killjoy, you want to manage your workspace mm-hmm. and the direct direction of the business, not not necessarily the people. Don't manage the people. Manage where you want it to go. I believe tr- in the people I've chosen. Yeah, to exactly. My task. Exactly. Trust your employees. Just got to provide the vision. Thank them for all that hard work that they're doing to take over the world. Thank them. I will give them a small island in New Zealand. There you go. Uh, and, you know, you, you already have a vision, but it's how you communicate it that makes you a good leader. If you communicate what your goals are in mm-hmm. your organization and let your you know employees know how they can work all together to accomplish this, We've got the plan, we've got the men, we've got the power. Yes. All right, so... (laughs) That's what makes a good leader. Let's say I want to be effective with taking out my nemesis, my hero. How do I put together my perfect team of assassins? So, okay, so teams are interesting. So this is is part of group psychology. Uh, And a team is a type of group that have several important characteristics here. So, Mm -hmm. So... 
if you want to put together the perfect team, you want to make sure these team members have some shared goal in relation to their work. Right now, you have the overall goal, which is taking over the world. Right. Right. But what? Let, let's say it's a group of geneticists who are trying to make sure that that, that head that they brought back mm-hmm. is the president of country X or the leader of country X. Dastardly country X. Right. Whatever it is. <clears throat> so you have to make sure that all those geneticists are on board. Mm-hmm. You want to make sure their, that their goals are all the same. Mm-hmm. You don't want one of them saying, uh, I'm not quite sure if this is what I should be doing, but I'm going along with it anyway. You want that to be a goal of them, too. They need to share my vision. Yeah, well, they need to share. This is this is beyond you. The team this vision. Is, yes, yes. This is beyond oh. you, Dr. Comstar. Whoa, Kilton. nothing is beyond me. Okay, all right. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to wonder if I'm talking to Billy Hall or Comstar Killjoy here. I think Can't Billy left a while ago. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so they want that shared goal. Mm-hmm. They have to interact with each other. Uh, in order to achieve their shared objectives, mm. right? They have to have these well-defined um, and interdependent roles. So what I mean by that, I know, I saw your confused look. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> so what that means is basically each person on a team has to have their own role and they can't sort of overlap. And that they have to, uh, well, they can overlap a little, but you don't want them in intruding on their other spaces right so let's say for example i bring you on as my right hand man i give you a pair of metal jaws and some power armor i'm not playing this game (laughs) i am not playing this game and you're gonna head up my 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 physical fighting guys lassie is someone stuck in the well (laughs) my 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 sharona uh you're gonna do that and so we want to make sure that you know you got the physical prowess but maybe you need someone who's good with weapons you're putting together a crack team Right. Who's go- yeah, you have the brains, the brawn. You have the, the face. Um, the face, yeah. yeah. The charisma, yeah. You, it, it's Ocean's Eleven. Right, 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 You're right. You're putting right. together this team. Of everyone the villain has- squad. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Ocean's Eleven of the villain squad. Yeah. Yes. yeah. You want everybody to have their own unique um, sort of skill set, but not to overlap. And it, it is like putting together a team uh, mm. or like even even in a, a MMO or, or, you know, Something like that. You want to. Ha- you want to have a tank. You want to have a healer. You want to have a damage dealer, and then anything else is just kind of bonus, right? Right. So, right. Right. Okay. Yeah. I get it. I get it. I get it. Right. So, uh, let's see here. You also, yeah, we already talked about having that organizational identity. With, oh, oh no, this is different. You have. They want to be able to identify themselves within the organization, but also within their team, and what their role within the organization is. They want that clearly sort of defined. Thing. And now let's let's talk. I wonder a- if that's why they actually named so many evil henchmen by numbers. Yeah, so you know which order to go in. Yeah, there you go. Like, like I'm assigned to task one. Like everyone, one for five is all going to be my geneticist, and then like you know six through ten is obviously going to be the people who do the genitorial. Even service. groups left side, odd groups right side. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> oh man! All right, anyone who got that reference. <laughs> Excellent. Props to you. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so, so let's talk a little bit about barriers, though, to team teams getting along. We will crush all barriers. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, oh, I don't know if you can crush these barriers, though. Okay. So, a lack of team purpose and tasks. Mm, okay. Okay. Do do your teams have purpose? Of course, to okay. rule the world okay. with okay. me. Okay. So the only part, the only point of having a team in the first place is to get a job done. Right. 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 I mean, a task completed. Uh, or or some set of objectives met. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah. So it's the idea of having a plan to go along it. Right. Right? Yeah, and, and furthermore, these tasks uh, that teams perform should be the tasks that are best performed by a team. You don't want to set a team on, uh, you know, a single-person task. Right, because it's going to be, it's going to just have a bunch of people doing nothing. It's going to be disorganized. Or, yeah, you can just run into everybody trying to do one thing where you've got yeah, five it, people trying to take one guy out. Where like five people one. crafted deadly swords, but I needed swords and other things. Right, exactly. Yeah, it, Blake, it comes back to that. that um, I just lost my train of thought. Well, <laughs> what it's did all you good. Just say? <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought about it, and then Bl- Billy was like. See, it's pretty easy. Sometimes when you're having fun in human factors, <laughs> these things happen. Oh. But, but this next point is, I think it's kind of important. So it's good to have structure. Definitely good to know what you need to do. But I always like a little bit of freedom in my 
yeah. job line yeah. of work. Don't micromanage Dr. Comstar Killjoy. I will Give not. Give us a little freedom. Freedom. Yeah. It's interesting what, what freedom does. You know, if you have if you don't give them freedom uh, or the authority basically to, to – it. okay. So think about it this way. It's kind of like riding, teaching a person to ride a bicycle, mm-hmm. giving them a bike. Right. And then uh, telling them they can only ride in the house. Like – What? That'd be awesome. I'd right. be riding oh. up and down the stairs. <laughs> Can you? Like, that's, the like stairs? there's no room. Basically, like you've 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 given them the skills, you've given them the tools, but you haven't given them the area to sort of run around in. I see. So it's kind of like doing it, playing a game in the backyard. It's like we could be playing this in the front yard, but you're only allowed to ride your bike in the backyard. That sucks. Yeah. Okay. 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 How many members do you have in your organization? Oh, uh, I don't know. A hundred good men. A thousand? Wow, okay. Maybe a That's thousand? A thousand. A lot of people to manage. Yeah, that is a lot of people to well, manage. Well, we're going to departmentalize and build teams. That's good. So how many people are in these teams? Well, it depends. I mean, like, you know, I have to have an assassin for each country. So that's probably going to be the biggest amount of them. You know, I need someone to train them. I need a geneticist. And I probably need communications officers. There's going to be a lot of different teams. So, yeah, there's a lot of teams. But how many people are on each team? Oh, I don't know. That was at least, like, three people right there you got any more well i need comm officers i need janitorial services i need someone to craft all those uniforms and costumes weapons people he's put way too much thought into this i need i need people to drive the boats and the planes again people this is a hypothetical situation yeah yeah. (laughs) sure it is (laughs) um so so billy yes i'm asking you as billy oh yes what's up uh, okay (laughs) would you argue that uh but hang on what is the what is the thing that we sign off the show with every week? It depends. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah. No. So that's exactly what happens when you come to team sizes, right? You you don't want to get too many members mm-hmm. or the wrong number of members just in general. You want you want it to be as small as possible. Right. But uh you want them to still be able to get the job done. And they suggest uh and and by they, I mean uh West uh, wrote an article in 2008 where they suggest about two to, or six to eight people as the absolute max, right? It's also crucial that you basically arm these members right. of the group, right. of the team, with the tools, like we, we said earlier. We got the tools. We got the talent. Right, exactly, to get the job done. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, wow, we have a lot of these. Yeah, we do. Woo. Woo. Oh we, no, we're not. We're almost well, done. We're, we're, almost, almost we're almost there. We're almost there. We're almost there. there. Oh, we will we? complete this task. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, yeah, again, this is a very, very happy holiday special. <laughs> about world domination. We got to remember. Yeah. We have hey, to remember. This is dropping like on. What is the 26th. best Christmas movie of all time? Oh, a Christmas story. Oh my gosh, dude! No, it's Die Hard. Yes. The best Christmas movie ever. <laughs> wow. Okay. You heard um, it here fo- first, people. I like a Christmas story. Nick Rome see. might be a communist. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. That is a huge accusation for me just saying I like a jump. Christmas story. <laughs> I'm not very happy right now. Blake, you take the next one. <laughs> this one's on you. <laughs> so now that we've I'm gonna got go pout. that out of the way. I'm going to go pout a little bit. <laughs> okay. Now that there are only Americans at the table. Go ahead, Blake. I'm American. <laughs> <laughs> I'm American. So it's definitely important to uh, focus on defining and understanding team processes and not try and neglect them and develop them late in the stage. So what, is that, what does that even mean? Mm. So you want to make sure that your team has their clear objectives, meets regularly, which is definitely important. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you want to participate in like constructive debates about how to best serve the needs of the organization. Are so, we really meeting those key evaluation drivers so, for Mr. Comstar? So that's the thing. Like when, when Spectre would get together in the James Bond films and stand in that long table, that's what they were doing. They were building Team Unity by talking and discussing their universal plans and how their projects were going. Yes, with shadows on their faces. Oh, my gosh. I'm really close to actually wanting to do this now. No. <laughs> I'm back. No. 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 All, All right. right. So hang on. What did we just talk about? Sorry. Uh, we were talking about the idea uh, of yes, neglect I see it. rather than... I see it. Okay. Uh, directive instead of facilitatively. What kind what? of leader are you? Are you directive or facilitative? 
are you going to sort of um let's see are you gonna are you gonna are you going to help them do their job or are you going to direct them to do their job why isn't it honest question why isn't it both okay that's a good question so leading a team Uh uh-huh is different than supervising one would you agree yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why they have supervisors. Right. And leaders. And leaders. Right. So supervisors are often advice giving, mm-hmm. right? And a leader of a team instead is facilitative. So they, they help the team do their goal. So think about think about this. Okay. Actually, why don't you give me an example of something in your organization? Give me a team. Okay, so Blake's going to head up my Ninja Assassin Squad. Okay. Goodness. Uh, He's going to head up my Ninja Assassin Squad, so I'm going to tell him, you got to get my Ninja Assassin Squad together. Here's my six people. Okay. Because six to eight, like you said. Right. I want you to direct them on how to get their job done. Make sure they're doing the best of their abilities. Here's a book on how to do that or something. So, I don't know. So you are... He's facilitating me he's facilitating. to direct the team to do what we need to do. Other way around. Is he's he? directing you to hmm. facilitate the team to do their job. Right? Yeah, if you got to bring him a muffin basket, bring them the muffin basket. Oh, he's, yeah. man. Yeah, he's not giving you the muffin basket. He's directing you to do that. Gotcha. Is yeah. that good or bad? So, so as uh, a team... Uh, for for in terms of barriers, right? Because that's what we're talking about. You want? Um, oh wait, did I read that wrong? I think I totally read. I think you were right, Blake. A burn. Oh, man. oh, 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 oh. you know what? I'm just gonna go off and be a communist. I'll be good. I knew it. <laughs> no, no not, really, not really. Not really. He's back. But I, that is kind of a good question, though. No, like, it which is, yeah. ones do you need? One or the other, or is it? Kind I mean, of I understand the idea of not doing more of one or the other because. Yeah. You, if you're too directive, you're just doing do that, do that, do that, do that, and there's yeah. no right. freedom in the job. Okay, so so check this out. So the leader's role within a group is to basically ensure that the team profits, you know, uh, together, um, and instead of let's see, how how am I going to say this? You you basically want to make sure that the team is reaching their optimum potential. That's mm-hmm. your team. That's your, as a team leader, that's your team objective. Okay. Right. And you don't, you don't want to, it, it all comes back to that freedom aspect, right? You don't want to tell them um, to just do this and limit them. You facilitate them to do their job and trust them. Mm, okay. So, so let me ask you about this one. Cause this one's interesting. Have you ever been working at a job and you're in a team and you're almost in competition with another team. Well, yeah. I've done that a bunch of times. That's awful. I mean, like, but especially when I was doing market research, we would have we would have two pro- the same project but two different teams. One person, you know, had to finish all their age groups before the other team did. And if you did, you got a bonus. Oh, wow. That's, wow. So it was like wow. direct competition Cut within throat. the company. Yeah, yeah, Jeez. yeah. It was it was uh, about $100 for each person, too. It wasn't a small bonus. Interesting. For that's, like a day worth of work. That's freaking cutthroat, man. Yeah, it was pretty brutal. That's that's bad. Huh. That's bad. Ironically. I uh, always won, so. <laughs> so so look, did. here's the thing. Were you, uh, wait, was it just you or was it a team? It was a team. Team versus okay. team. So, so let me ask you this. Was your team kind of. Co- was it like a cohesive team where you guys all bond and like yeah work yeah together? yeah yeah we so had trust falls and everything there's an interesting thing that goes on with that so the more you trust fall the more you trust each other and hang out with each other and right. sort of build this camaraderie and, co- and cohesiveness mm. the more competitive and partisan they tend to be towards their own team really you mean the more yeah. time that the three of us hang out doing this podcast the more competitive we're going to get against other podcasters oh but, oh, but we'll mess other podcasters no, no, up. No, no, no. Hold on. Come on. Hold on. Chris Hardwick, I got you. Whoa. Hold on. <laughs> Let's just be fair here. Any other podcasters who want to be on this show, send me an email. Likewise, if you think we'd be a good fit on your show, send us an email. We are happy. We are happy to, despite us being pretty cohesive, we are very happy to entertain that idea. So if you're listening and if you have another podcast, let us know. We'd be more than happy to be on your show. And if you want to have an all-out brawl, come get some. No. No, I'm sorry. I'm no. sorry. I'm missing the point here. I'm He's sorry. He's evil you super are. today, man. 
Yeah. Anyway, so that's that's another. I get it. Yeah. No, we love being on other podcasts. I love other podcasts. Yeah. yeah, Okay. So let's get down to the bad side. Let's get down to the bad side. I have insat. Wow. Okay. Hold on. Who put together the show notes? Was it? Did you put this last week? I did. This wow. is how we're wrapping it up. Why did you do this? Oh my god! Happy Let's holidays! Get... Happy holidays, everybody! What well, are... I mean, if well, I'm going to be an evil genius, there are times that I'm going to be. I'm sorry, my Arctic division is no longer necessary. <laughs> I love. This. I guess you know what we are telling a story, so this does come last. No, but I, there is there's a good <laughs> spin to it. So Billy, okay, Billy, ask the my <laughs> Arctic division is no longer necessary. I have taken out everybody of importance in the Arctic, all two of them. And I have been, I, I'm firmly <laughs> in place there, so I do not need my assassins anymore. I need to cut costs so that I can make sure the Christmas bonuses and hire new people and everything like that. So how do I downsize my organization? Oh, Just feed them all to layoffs. polar bears and sharks? You're talking about layoffs. Okay, Blake, since you put this one last and you want to bum everybody out on their holiday break. Bum them out. You go ahead and handle this one. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> no, so you don't have to feed them to the sharks with lasers. But oh, the best thing right. you're going to have to do is determine exactly the people you need. Like, how, what is going to make the organization keep going and keep being profitable? Can like, I might be able to move the... some of those ninja assassins to other divisions and well, maybe just get rid of the command staff. There. So we, we do a lot of research for this show, right? And that was something that kept coming up because I was looking up downsizing. Mm. And kind of the next point Tis is... the season. Yeah. Oh, right. man. It can be. <laughs> how uplifting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, so... You could avoid downsizing by training or educating the current people you have. Like, if you want to take your Arctic division into a new direction, you could solve the problem of thinking that, okay, I just don't have the right people by implementing different training strategies. Like teach them how to be in forests and deserts. Exactly. Okay, okay, okay. You can train them to be in a different part of the organization. Mm, Um, mm -mm. But let's say you just can't do that, and you're going to have to let people go. Could just be... Blake, what happens if he's running out of money? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. The the villainy thing just put, ain't working out. It's, it's, put a it, positive, doesn't, it, it doesn't. It, the upfront cost is huge. Yeah. The, put a positive spin on this. I dare you. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it back. So this is this is kind of a barrier to make people not want to downsize a little bit. So prepare, you got to be prepared to experience another low period if you cut a bunch of people down. Because mm-hmm. now you've lo- it's potentially that your ninjas became friends and now you're losing colleagues and so oh. they're, they're oh. going to assassinate oh. you. Oh, no. not, they don't want to be at work anymore. This is, oh, yeah. yeah. Don't, okay. don't, don't fire the they assassins. They might not trust me. Exactly. What if I have you fire them, though? Oh, then they're not going to like me. But so that's all right. What's don't the, fire the assassins. What's the worst thing? If, like me, who they may not always meet with me, or would it be better for me to fire them? And then you tell me, I'm sorry, guys. Some of you got to go Ooh. or the other way around. This is kind of an interesting dynamic, though, because let's let's think about that. If I'm the one that has to interface with them all the time, it mm-hmm. would be better probably for me and us as an organization to say that it came down from you regardless of actually where it comes from. Because you're the one that runs the thing. They're not going to interface with you. And it's removed. It's yeah, like, it's very far removed. It's, it's not, not necessarily as personal. like it's personal. Like, you are a bad employee. It's just like, I'm sorry, but you were the lowest black belt from the Cobra Kai dojo. Yeah, so... You it, didn't it, get it, your rainbow belt. You yeah. didn't get the tie-dye. You forgot the floral belt at home. Oh, man. Okay, uh, so maybe it's better for me to do the firing... And you to be passing it out, but you can be... I'm very secondary to it and passive. Facilitating. I you can, can facilitate their transition out of the job. I'm facilitating my boss's directive. Uh, Let's throw it back no, I'm notes. directing you to do it. You're facilitating. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> well, was that a happy note? That's happy enough for okay. me. Okay. All right. My world domination <laughs> plan is coming soon. Man, this was, this was really bad, Blake. Why'd you put this? <laughs> this is going to bump everybody out. <laughs> Happy holidays, everybody, from Human Factors cast. Merry that is Christmas. it for today. If you guys want to be featured on our show, and please do write us in, because next week we'll be back. We're going to be taking a look at the stuff that we got and the stuff that we gave for the holidays this year. We're going to be taking a look at death ray. all that. Oh, my God. Stop it, Dr. Dr. Comstar Killjoy. Not. We, <laughs> we're going to be looking. Are you going to be a reoccurring guest on the show now? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> no, we're going to be taking a look at all the fun stuff that we got for the holidays and uh, kind of break it down. We'd love to hear some of your stories, so email us. Let us know what you got. We'd be happy to read them on the show. Uh, you can always comment on our SoundCloud, Facebook, Twitter, 
send us an email at humanfactorscast at gmail.com with all your questions, comments, stories. We like to hear it all, and we read everything that comes through our inboxes. You can also get to the front of our line, of our question line, uh, or our read it on the show line, or, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever, by supporting us on our Patreon site at patreon.com slash humanfactorscast. Be sure to like, subscribe, review us on iTunes, the Google Play Store, SoundCloud, or your favorite podcast directory. We're always trying to keep in touch with interesting topics that you guys, our listeners, want to hear about on the show. So feel free to let us know what you want to hear about. Uh, So feel free. Yeah, suggest a way. I mean, you know, all that good stuff. (laughs) (laughs) Jeez. Uh, wow, why did the music stop? The music stopped. You forgot stopped. to plug it in. No, it's, it's there. Oh. There we go. Okay, yeah, we're keep going. We're keep going. I had it on loop. I don't know why it stopped. All right, anyway. Wow. We're, <laughs> we're professional, everybody. Woo! Woo! Happy holidays, everyone. Blake! Arnstorp. Yes. Where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter at UX Chill Room. As always, thanks to my co-host, Dr. Comstar Killjoy. Where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter or streaming at YouTube. At Comstar Cleric. And if you want to send me a picture of what Comstar Killjoy looks like, please. Oh, my God. Yeah, we got to keep some yeah. artwork. Yeah. I just imagine you in like a um, steampunk do- outfit with goggles on my a head. Dr. Horrible. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> oh, man. This is a fun show. I like this show. Yeah, this it was fun. fun. All it right. was fun. All right. As for me, I've been your host, Nick Rome. You can find me chastising these guys for playing a part. <laughs> Of uh, <laughs> Dr. Comstar Killjoy and uh, putting, you know, that, that really awful note at the end of the show. But at least we're not communists. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, you can find me on LinkedIn or Twitter at Nick underscore Rome. Thanks again for tuning in to Human Factors Cast. Until next time, it, it depends! depends. <laughs>